And now, joining us for our film club, I have a special guest. Hello, special guest. Hello, Daniel. Oh, it's Malachi. Hello, Malachi. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> You're welcome. So what films are we going to look at today? Today we're going to look at German favorites Der Schuh des Manitou and Traumschiff Surprise. So you say that they're favorites. How favorite are they? Well, Daniel, they are the number one and number two films in Germany, German films in Germany of all time, respectively. And I was very shocked by this because, in my opinion, spoiler alert, they're not very good. Let's start with uh, Schuh des Manitou. Could you maybe summarize what it's about? Yeah, it's about... Uh, bunch of indians that act like flamboyant idiots okay uh, but it's well, supposed to be a send-up of the Karl my um tr german tradition of cowboys and indians westerns and it's supposed to be like a hilarious comedy um spoof on that genre and it's just a lazy incompetently made um unfunny train wreck okay well let's listen to a clip and then we'll uh find out whether you like it or not Abahachi, my brother. Du gewollt ziehen ab über dem Land, wo die Schuschonen schön wohnen. Los, mein Gott! Jetzt lassen heute mal ausreden, du Arschloch. Immer dieses alberne Geschrei und immer bum 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 und Pfeile und schießen und so laut. Soll ich sie noch einmal ablenken? Der Schuh des Manitou. So, tell me a bit more about the parts of the film that you liked or didn't like. Parts of the film I liked. There was nothing. Did you, any parts of the film you liked? No, to be honest. But what parts didn't you like? All of it, from the beginning to the end. Well, what? Maybe you could mention them specifically. Okay, so there's a scene where you can see this on YouTube, dear listener, if that's what you're into. Um, a scene where they're sort of basically there's a there's a training training. Sequence. There's a twins. There's these identical twin Indians. They're both everyone in the movie is an idiot, but this one particular twin is an, is a particular idiot. And what makes him so hilarious, Daniel, is that he dresses in pink instead of regular brown Indian clothes, and he acts really flamboyantly and kind of girlishly. And what's funny about that is that he's that it's uh, emasculating, and um, that a man would ever act this way, especially an Indian man in the Wild West is what makes this hilarious. So I wouldn't go as far as to say that it was homophobic because it doesn't specifically mention his sexuality, but it does work on these typical homophobic stereotypes. This idea of um, there being a flamboyant man who's actually seen as lesser because he acts a bit like a woman. Now, okay, I mean, it's not as if this joke should be banned or anything like that, whatever. I mean, you can you can do something creative or clever or funny with that but it, it it doesn't have anything redeeming about it this joke it seems to be that it's just okay imagine you take this this indian right but like make him flamboyant and feminine um and that's the joke that there's there's nothing deeper to it which is quite disappointing it's like funny voices silly walks and silly expressions but that's as far as it goes didn't blazing saddles do that yeah but blazing saddles was at least partially a a comment on or a satire of uh, or a com commentary on racism and um, like to a small degree. But and, and the jokes were at least clever. This is just if you thought here's what it is. If you thought if you go into a classroom full of six year olds and whatever whoever the class clown of that particular class is um, with his fart jokes and his hilarious voices makes you uncontrollably stop. You can't stop laughing if, if that just cracks you up then this movie is for you. But it's really popular among... Um, Everybody in Germany. It's the most popular movie in Germany it's, ever. Yeah, the mo most, it's the, the most watched film um, in Germany. It's and, Germany's Avatar. But uh, that's an awful thing to say, but I think it's... There's, 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 yeah. Both have terrible stereotypes of Native Americans. <laughs> yeah. You can see why it's so hilariously... Yeah. But it's... Uh, I read one review of the film which seemed quite accurate to me. It said that while normally parodies take cliches from other films and make fun of them, this just makes its own cliches. It takes the other cliches and then adds its own just gaggy cliches them. on top of them. Yeah, it just, just repeats them. It just repeats then... the cliche for humorous purposes. Yeah. So, are if you that's a... worth something to you, go ahead and watch this movie. Are you a fan of this film? Not really, Daniel. Okay, so let's move on to the next film, which is called... 
Traumschiff Surprise, made by the same people, starring the same people, with exactly the same sense of humor, plus Till Schweiger. Let's listen to a clip. Okay, ladies, you have now the opportunity to buy a free goods. Has anyone lust on music? Klar. Hi, hi, hi to tie. Space taxi to the sky. Hi, hi, hi to tie. Space taxi to the sky. Come on. Feuer Salamander. So high. Mach Beine auseinander. Check it out. Mach Beine bitte zu. Juhu. Und raus bist du. Oh. Hi, hi, hi to tie. What do you think of Traumschiff Surprise? It even has, they even at one point go back in time to the Wild West and meet some of the same characters that are in Shooter's Manitou. It's like if you couldn't get enough of Shooter's Manitou, which runs it, how long How long does that movie run? Long. For? Too long. There's more of that in this movie. It's quite disappointing, isn't it? It's exactly the same movie. It is exactly the same movie. It is exactly the same repeat offender of all of the same things that make it terrible. It's just lazy. That's what bothers me. Actually, that, and that wouldn't even bother me if this wasn't the most popular movie ever made in Germany. Well, this one's the second most popular. Right. They just couldn't, That's you know, the only redeeming quality about it. You can't it. capture that lightning in a bottle from the first moon. <laughs> well, the core joke in this film is, again, the effeminate stereotype. And that's it. That's, that's the, and they that's the just whole joke. Use... At one point, they put Till Schweiger in, like, a pink uh, suit of armor, like, from the Middle Ages with hearts and flowers. And the joke seems to be... Um, here's a guy who's known for being manly, but he's wearing something that's not manly. And that makes him look silly. Like, there, there could be something in that, <laughs> but that's it. That There's nothing extra, there's nothing behind it. They're not saying something about society. Like, they could have made it somehow intelligent, a satire or whatever, but it is just that. That is, that is it. It's like... Ha ha, these people are acting effeminately. And I, it doesn't make me, like, angry because it works on stereotypes, but it's just lazy. It's just, there's, no, there's nothing behind it. And, and again, all of that would be fine. And that movie can have... Like, I have nothing against bad movies, bad comedy. Um, they have their place in society. But do they have their place on the top? Are, do, do these filmmakers deserve to be the richest German filmmakers of all time? No. No. Then I do have a question. Some people, you know, would wrongly say, yeah, well, German humor, the Germans are not well known for their humor. And I, I don't like this kind of attitude. No. Have, have there been good German comedy films? Yeah. I think Goodbye Lenin is an excellent German comedy. I yeah. think uh, it's, it's subtle, which is the good thing. It's not trying to hit you with, you know, lame gags every second. No, it's just good comedy. Mm. And. I think Loyo is a famous uh, comedian, a German comedian from like biggest in the seventies and eighties. But I think he's, he's great. genuinely funny. Yeah, he's, he, I don't know if he made films, but he certainly. I think I think he made films. I, don't, I haven't seen them, but certainly on television he was huge, and he's very good in the sense that that people respect Monty Python these days. Yeah, and it's not even that he's. It's, it's not only that he's good; he's also over the top in the way that these films want to be funny in that way, but they're just not. Okay, and how would you rate Traumschiff Surprise? On a scale of what? Of good to bad. Bad. <laughs> it's like minus bad, like less, worse it's than not, bad. It's, I challenge any of you listening to get through the entire trailer. Go try to finish the trailer of either of these films. You won't be able to because it's so dumb. You will literally die before it happens. But this, we should say, although we b hated both of these films, they're not representative of German cinema. <laughs> Um, we, we've, we've reviewed some great, some very good films on this, um, on, in this segment. So yeah, we just thought it'd be fun to do something different, and also because they're the most popular ones, surprisingly. Yeah, number one and two of all time. Not just not just German comedies, German films. films. Yeah, says a lot, I guess. Anyway, what film would you like to review next time? We're going to take a look at the classic German film Fritz by Fritz Lang M. From 1931, right? Right. Bet you're surprised at my film knowledge there. Yeah, it's a classic, and we're going to watch that for June's Film Club.